All right, we are live. Hi guys, it's Claris. Happy Sunday. It is July 18th and I am running a few minutes behind, but I am just going to allow um, some time for you guys to get notified and then for you guys to kind of start trickling in before I begin. I see you guys are here. Hi, Cindy. Hi, hi Leah. I was going to say Leah. Hi, Leah. Um, yeah, so as you guys are coming in, great. Um, I'm feeling very mellow and lazy-ish today. Uh, that's because we had a overnight an overnight trip uh, in Toronto. It was like an adults only trip. We we did it with the neighbors and uh, um, the kids are with their grandparents. So it was like a nice night out. We first time having a uh, dinner on a patio in like 18 months, like in a restaurant. So it was it was kind of like a novelty for us, even though Toronto is like 30 minutes away. It was our vacation without needing um, to fly anywhere which is typically what I like to do when I go on vacation. I like to fly out of the country. So in any case, it was great. Uh, we had a fabulous time. We got some amazing brunch today. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you should check out my stories because I posted a lot of pictures from last night and even uh, this morning's brunch, which was, uh, you know, I'm a foodie. I love food. So um, that's where we're at. But yeah, I rushed over home. I didn't get a chance to send out an email saying we're doing a live today. It is very much so happening. And um, um, so, yeah, I hope you guys are ready to join. Um, before we start, I'm going to quickly have a look at the comments. Hi, Carol. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Diane. Um, hi, Christine. Hi, Gail. Hey, Jill. Welcome back. What? Um, Roxanne, about the neck. My neck is constantly in that shape. Uh, I haven't seen a Cairo in years, and I think I should be hopping on that soon. Um, thanks, Cindy. Hi, Mary. Yes, that brunch was amazing. That was like a lobster salad um, croissant, and it was, yeah phenomenal we just ate in the car and then drove back home hi Maria hi Ellie uh, okay all right so really quickly before we start because uh, I actually got a comment uh, earlier this week saying oh my gosh I can't believe you spoke for nine minutes before you actually started painting so uh, I guess people also don't realize it's alive I'm actually chatting with you guys and you guys are commenting in there but the replay kind of seems like extra long but just remember you can always scroll through, right? If I'm gabbing too much for your liking and just get to the good parts, which is where we're painting. Um, so while I have you guys here, I wanna quickly, I'm gonna switch over my um, uh, my camera so you can see my table. Um, here it is, that's transition. Perfect, okay, awesome. And now I'm gonna go back so I can see your chat. Um, yeah, so a couple of things before we actually begin. I hope you guys are very, very excited because I have so much coming down the pipeline. Um, you've heard of my watercolor in the vineyards. That is happening. The first session ever. Hopefully, um, it'll expand into much more. It's a bit of a drive for me from, uh, from where I am to Niagara, but I am willing to do it because I love watercolor. And I just the whole ambiance would be amazing this week we did um, we did wildflowers and I would like to kind of keep with the theme and incorporate these into what we're painting today um, the rose uh, another rose class is coming up August 6th so if anyone wants to sign up please feel free to check out the sign up link on Instagram it is in the bio and uh, Nope, oh, nothing on here. Yes, people have been asking for black watercolor paper. So guess what is coming in the next week or maybe two weeks. So stay tuned for that. 
and I will be using the metallics on this combined with some other things so we're gonna have a lot of fun so I'm just giving you guys a heads up so you can sort of go out and get your own paper if you want to go along with me or just check out the tutorials and then do it whenever you have the time to get this but here's your heads up I have given you a warning um, my brushes um, there's going to be a new video coming out showing you what I think about this lot of brushes right here by Zen Art Supplies. Uh, they're actually pretty big and because my surface space for painting is not as big, uh, I don't know how often I'll be using them, but I will definitely do my best because I do like how they are. So look out for that video as well if any of you like to paint on larger sheets of paper. These are quite economical and pretty good brushes in my opinion. Um, okay let's get right to the heart of the matter let me just make sure that i can uh the lighting is good um so that especially for the replay you guys are able to then see um a little more clearly give me one second to kind of adjust that too bright okay perfect all right so uh let's get let's get down to business i'm gonna tie my hair up right here and let you guys know exactly what we are doing today so i got my water ready i have a palette which is semi dirty but it's okay we're gonna work with that for my brushes today i am going to be using my number four silver black velvet and um, the rigor number two and then my rogue uh filbert brush number four i call it rogue because it's so much larger than the princeton that i purchased and uh, no one seems to be able to kind of find this, I guess, uh, thickness or size of brush out there. And I don't know this brand Q series, like a Wave Water Media. I've not been able to find them again. So this is what I'm using for my colors. It's my my White Knights because we're going to be incorporating these into today's painting. We are using the Ultramarine Blue Violet uh indigo and that that forms this right here uh we're definitely going to be using some of the green green yellowish green and then yellow ochre and then for these other blooms that i have in mind for today i am going to be using the golden and uh actually i have my sheet right here so you guys can see the colors so if you don't have my colors you can definitely get something like this so the golden is right here. Um, I'm gonna get some of the cadmium medium lemon, cadmium red light. I'm just keeping all of these handy guys. So I might use all of them. I might end up using or not using one or two of them. We'll see. Here's the ultramarine blue so you can see that. Here's the violet, uh, indigo, ochre, green, and then yellowish green. So this is what we're going to be doing today. All right, so let's begin. I am going to put all of these down now. Oh, and if you guys are wondering about this swatch sheet here, this is from the Hello Clarice G Challenge. Uh, most of you follow me anyway, so you know about the challenge. But if you don't, you should definitely check it out. Again, link is in on uh, Instagram on the um, in the bio. For paper today, I am going to be using... Hansen. I know I typically use uh, Etcher, but today we are using Canson. And here we are with Canson. I'm going to tear this sheet off. This is actually an upcoming video for you guys. So you actually got a sneak peek there. All right, so now you can see my, um, now you can see my sheets. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that everything is still very clear before I begin and move things over here so that it's not in the way. Perfect. Okay, good. And let's begin right now. So first things first, I am actually, you know what, I need the uh, silver black velvet number eight in my uh, stash over here as well, along with the four. Um, so we're gonna start off with using the 
the um, filbert but to mix the colors and get the colors onto my palette I'm gonna be using the number eight first and uh, first color I want to use is the I just want to quickly reference the chart before I tell you guys um, yeah we're gonna use the golden there's a golden right here so I'm mixing some of the golden, getting it down onto my palette. This is perfect. I don't want to get it too, too, too intense. This is fabulous. Um, then I am going to go ahead, get a little bit of water onto my brush and get some of the cadmium red light. Mix that onto here. And then I also want some of the carmine. So we're going to get some of the carmine on here as well. So I notice I'm not really washing my brush now I am because I felt like this is a little bit too orangey I want some pinky hues so here we go so these are for my big blooms which we are going to be tackling right now and then once that is done we are going to get into the um, the cornflowers I think it'll be a nice contrast with the orange and uh, the greens that we're going to be having so let's begin uh, dipping and wetting my filbert brush I am going to get some of the uh, I'm going to get some of the golden like I mentioned and notice how it's got water on it already so it's kind of diluting the color I have here and when I lay this down it's going to be a lot more see through than what it looks like on my palette all right so also keeping my number eight handy because what I'm gonna do is dip into the golden or into one of these colors here to kind of get some additional colors happening and blending in with the golden all right so first things first we are going to create the main bloom which is going to be right around here in this section and I'm going to start off by doing the little inner cup area as I like to normally call it so pressing down pushing down all the color and then kind of using the side of my brush to do a little bit of a side stroke and then again I'm going to dip the tip of my brush in water get a little bit more of this golden from here push down more of the color create another version of that over here so I like to create the cup in kind of three sort of petals with white space in between and again I'm pushing all the color down and then I just did a very simple stroke to the side over here and that's it and I'm leaving it that way and now at this point I'm gonna go ahead and create the background uh, petals for this so I'm just using the same brush and I'm kind of just creating this very loosey kind of background strokes I don't know how else to explain it but they're almost like little peaks and they're not they're rounded more than anything else and I'm leaving the white space in between because we're gonna go back in there and add some of the cadmium lemon uh, to indicate the centers a little bit and I'm just adding a couple of really light strokes around the area to kind of indicate um, that there's more happening in a loose manner on the outskirts of this area here now I'm gonna get a little bit of the cadmium lemon um, cadmium red onto the brush and I'm just gonna add a couple of strokes in here with that because I want it to blend in and give us that nice two-tone hue as well so I'll actually just bring this back here in I see I'm blending some of the golden with the cadmium red and we're gonna do the outer bits now which is the petals that are on the outside flapping outward that is and again notice very loose and I'm leaving white space and most of the petals are not fully formed this is the technique for loose style of watercolor so don't try and perfect that just go with it now I'm gonna go ahead and take the number I know I was using I said number eight but I'm gonna use the number four instead and get some of the Carmen 
that we've pre-mixed and I'm going to add some of these hues on here and especially in this area here and just wanting it to kind of blend in and give us these multiple areas of color happening. So again, getting some of the Carmen and I'm kind of sweeping my brush over these areas to kind of get it in there. And some off to the side as well. And then now I'm going to go ahead and get some of the cadmium. And I want to add that to the bottom of these here. And we're getting this nice dark to light kind of effect. And notice how I'm just kind of doing a little curve here and there. And again, it gives us a nice, um, it differentiates the petals one from the other. And you can kind of tell that just because of the simple strokes of color that we're kind of adding in. And just adding a couple on the insides there as well. And then dipping the tip of my brush in water. I'm just gonna enhance these tinier strokes on the outside. Perfect. Now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and get some of the cadmium lemon, medium lemon, and I'm just going to add that into the center over here, or the peaking center as, you, as I like to call it, and I'm just kind of spreading it onto the sides as well because this is one of those big blooms so you can kind of see the center peaking from these little petals that we've got here. And then I'll leave it at that. We've done this little bloom. Now I'm gonna do a very similar bloom, but we're gonna go ahead and get some of the, the uh, cadmium lemon, sorry, not cadmium lemon, the cadmium red light, which was mixed with the golden, because I wanna flesh out and use the same colors that we're using over here. So that's the plan. So uh, we'll do, we'll try and make it smaller than this. So I'm gonna kind of go ahead and create this one just by kind of doing your little five petal uh, bit. And then, so this one is facing upward. And again, notice my strokes are very loose. I'm not fully completing the petals and I'm kind of leaving space all around. I'm gonna go back in with the number four and I'm gonna get my uh, cadmium lemon right away and I'm just gonna add that to the center here. And I want this to kind of spread into the petals ASAP. That's why I'm doing this right away. All right, now I'm gonna keep my brush to the side. I'm gonna get some of the color that I've mixed up. And now we're kind of gonna go ahead and do these little like strokes around it because it's gonna look like it's fluffier. And these are the petals in the background dipping the tip of my brush in water. Making sure that you are keeping a lot of white space in between so that you can actually get that effect of light and dark, shadow, shadow and light, whatever you wanna call it. And so now it looks like this full floral that's like facing upward, right? Now I'm gonna go back and not the number four, I'm gonna use the number eight and I'm gonna get some of the, let's get some of the Carmen. I'm getting some of the Carmen and I'm gonna mix it onto my palette here, mix some of the color, the cadmium red that I have to kind of get this going on. And I'm gonna add a couple of strokes of this Carmen into these areas that are damp. And my reasoning is I want it to blend in. 
I'm going to add some into the innermost petal as well. And again, I am just hoping for a very organic blend at this point. Uh, and that's why I'm doing this because I want it to kind of blend in and kind of really give us this nice two-tone effect. So now I got some color directly from the from the um, from the color cake and I'm just going to go ahead and add an additional kind of layer of strokes around again in hopes that it's going to blend in nicely and give us a nice contrast against this floral right here. Dipping the tip of my brush in water, I'm just going to smoothen out some of these harsher looking lines that I've created. Smoothening things out a bit. I don't want the Carmen to overpower the Cadmium Red or the Golden that we've kind of done in this floral already. So I'm going to leave this as is. We've got our two main florals. And we'll just do one more to kind of highlight or give us some additional contrast here. And so for that one, let's make it happening. Carmen. And I'm going to make it smaller looking. So I'm going to go directly into this, get some with the number eight, keeping my filbert handy. And we're going to start off by doing... Uh, I was just doing one, like a little bit of a stroke here. Now taking my filbert, I'm going to get some of that orangey color we got happening and just do another stroke here and kind of finish off this floral off to the side. And I'm just adding a couple of strokes at the top of it too. I'm going to use the number eight and get some pink in at the bottom and kind of just fluff it around. Allow it to kind of blend in nicely. And we've got this like tinier floral happening at the top here. Perfect. And I am not doing anything else to this outside of adding some lemon into this area here. I love how that lemon looks with the Carmen. It just gives such a great feel to the whole bit. Now we're gonna go and do some of the leaves. Before we go in and do our, um, uh, what's it called, our cornflowers. So for the leaves, I'm gonna use the, for the first set of leaves, I'm gonna use my number eight and we're gonna mix some of the green and I'm gonna take some of the yellow ochre. And mixing that in here. And what I wanna do is get some dark leaves or opaque looking leaves and then getting some leaves that are very see-through see and light. So we'll start off by doing one leaf over here in this corner, just because this area is nice and damp. So I'm pressing, using the tip Pressing down, trailing off, getting a little bit of water on the tip of my brush. I'm going to do the same thing on this side and get this nice thick looking leaf happening here. And then let's get a little bit more of leaves happening. I'm going to get some at the bottom here and that's mainly because it is still damp here. So same like we did the first leaf at the very top. I'm using the tip to kind of draw my line then press down and trail off or push off into the petal. I'm going to get a little bit more of this color, the green, and we're going in and creating a stem to get another leaf happening here. And then a stroke there. Let's get these light leaves out of the way. And once they're out of the way, we can kind of go in and create some darker looking leaves to give us a nice contrast. So one at the top here. This is all completely dried up, so we're not getting a great blend over here and that's okay. We're not gonna stress about that. 
I'm going to get some of the green again and continue mixing. And like I mentioned, I want it to be slightly darker. So I'm getting some of the green and what I'll also do is get a little bit of the indigo and mix it in with my green to give me a nicer, darker hue. And you can either continue using the number eight or use the number four if you want more controlled, smaller leaves than what we have already. I'll do, I'll do a little bit with the eight and then I'm gonna switch to the number four. So let's do one over on this end here. and I'm pushing all the dark color to the tip. I'm gonna add a little bit of a stroke into this leaf here as well, get some nice two tones happening with the leaves that we've already kind of added on here. Give it a little bit of shade, shadow, shade. Uh, going back, we're gonna create another one over here on a more delicate scale, as you can see. And then a just, just a very loose looking one over here on this side. I'm gonna get some of that indigo and just add it to the bottom of this leaf and add a little bit of an extra shade effect here. So you can see the contrast that this provides with the, li the light blooms that we have. Like something needs to be contrasting, something needs to be in, not just in color, but also sizing and texture. And so this is how this one right here is with color. Nice dark green against the lighter, brighter hues that we have happening. So mixing some more of this because I'd like to have some of this action happening somewhere else. Um, actually, let's have it happening over here at the bottom. And I'm just going to have a one protruding this way. And just getting some color, indigo color directly from there. Painting it in here. And then doing a loose stroke of that over here as well. Notice how I'm leaving some white space on my leaves. Then dipping the tip of my brush in water, I'm going to go on and create just like a really loose stroke right here, indicating another leaf. So that's perfect. I like how these are turning out. I'm going to do another loose one here. Notice how it's super light and op um, not opaque, super light. And let's do a couple happening over here. Again, we want to go dark first and then light. <clears throat> so remixing some color and we are going to create that over here. Just feel free to take some of that indigo directly from there and go over. Allow it to submerge in the green and blend. I'm actually going to paint directly on top of this leaf so it looks like it's in the background. Just adding some hints of like tinier leaves over there and then like strokes that are kind of fading off or leaves background leaves all right so I think this is good now I'm gonna switch to my number eight sorry not number eight number four and this is so that I can get some nice um, smaller leaves, more controlled. 
and possibly even longer just to give us a nice different shape to what we have here. So I'm just gonna add some of these over on this side here first. Just like that in that manner. And then this just adds like something nice and delicate to the whole painting. Um, so you've got some big leaves, you've got some small leaves. And let's see, where else can I do some? I can definitely do some over on this end. Now let's do some over here, poking out at the top. Am I thinking about where the cornflowers are going to be? No. I'm going to leave that till the very end and as is my perfect style I'm going to be winging it. So hopefully I have success in the winging this time. Just adding a couple of smaller leaves here. some over at the bottom as well and I'm just trying to disperse this sizing of leaf so it looks whole and complete and not only saturated in certain areas, but it's kind of well dispersed throughout. And we don't have any here, so I'm going to do a little bit there. And then finally we've got one, two, three, and I'll just do some poking out here and then let's move on to the um, to the wildflowers, the cornflowers that we are supposed to be doing. So I'll have one, I'll have this one protruding this way and then give it a couple of stems so I know exactly where I'm doing my leaves. Perfect. And dipping the tip of my brush in water. I'm just gonna go ahead and create my little Tiny leaves. And then maybe just like softer ones here in a very light green. Actually gonna wipe this off a little bit so it doesn't look too saturated okay great now we can do some of the blue uh, what was I calling it cornflowers yes so if you guys have watched the video this week and I hope you have if you haven't please do refer to it I'm going to be zooming by this area here uh, so I'm going to start off with using some of the ultramarine blue and I'm using my number four and now it's just about placement and where we're going to be placing it. Uh, this doesn't typically have to be protruding at the top, it could be poking out from the sides as well. So I'm going to just have some one over here first and foremost and I'm just adding very loose strokes using the nice shape from my silver black velvet number four and then I'm going to get in some of the 
violet. Adding some additional of these strokes in there and now I'm going to go get in some of the indigo turquoise and I'm adding more of that on the insides and just a few on the outsides. Now notice I don't have too much white space happening over here because the colors, it's all about the colors and how they're blending in in this flower. And so for the outer bit now, I'm just taking some water and I'm going to get a little bit of the ultramarine blue again and I'm kind going to kind of fluff out the edges. And I want it to be fading off, so that's why I'm using less color, so it's like a faded blue as opposed to a more potent dark blue. And also these are just supposed to be little pops of bright blue that enhance the whole painting that we've done so far. So stick with that idea and not giving it too, too much detail and just kind of running with the idea that it's there as an enhancer and a filler floral for contrast really. Uh, I'm going to do another one kind of poking downward and we're going to do a couple of little strokes just like that. You can see there's a whole debate happening about if people want to see my face for my live or not. Uh, now I'm getting the violet and I'm adding that in. And then I'm going to get some of the green. And you know what? For this green, I am going to mix it in with more of this uh, yellow ochre. And simply because I want a completely different a uh, warmer tone of green for these. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to just kind of roughly add a couple of strokes to the bottom of this. And I love how this green's turned out and then just add a stroke to kind of look that it's coming from under this flower. And then you can even extend one for the first one that we did as well. And, and that is it for those little guys. You can enhance by adding some of their loose looking green uh, leaves that they normally have. I'm just adding like a little bit of green at the top of it as well. Perfect, I'm gonna leave it at that. And going back in, we're going to do one blue at the top here. And this way it gives us like a... Actually, one, one blue at the bottom would also be nice. So let's just... Same manner that we've been doing the other two. I'm adding my strokes of blue first. And dipping the tip of my brush in water. I'm going to get a lighter color. Just add some of that, give it some nice airing out. I'm going to get some of that uh, beautiful um, violet and add some of that in the very center. I'm just adding some strokes into it and I'm going to leave it white in the center right there. I'm not going to close that up. Dipping the tip of my brush in water, I'm just going to do a couple of light strokes on the extreme outer edge of this flower. 
and again I want it to look light to dark or just giving it some nice variation in um, in color and also consistency perfect and I love how that blue is turned out and uh, I think just for uh, it'll be nice to have a a bud. Now I know the buds are not generally blue, but I, I, I had some blue so I'm just going to add that in there. I'm going to get some of the green now and add it in here. Mix it up a bit. And then give it a stem that kind of goes down. Oh, my stem was too thick. Hopefully you guys get a thinner stem. Should have probably used my rigger for this. But it's okay. Where's the blue? Right here. Indigo. I'm going to add some of that in here just to kind of give it a nice darker hue. Perfect. And I like these little uh, wiry looking... Um, buds that these florals have like they're so pretty I love it and I think we should definitely add one of those kind of poking out possibly over on this end diagonally would be nice and so I'm just going to make sure I've got that nice dark color happening I'm mixing some of the green with the with the violet like I did at the top. I'm just doing a very rough um, rendition of the of the bud and then dipping the tip of my brush in water just to kind of dampen it a bit. I'm gonna create the extension for it. There we go. Feel free to add in some of your little leafy strokes in there as well if you want. Extend this down here. In fact, I you know how I messed up and had this one be a little thick? I'm just going to add some strokes to kind of make it look like there's some overlapping leaves on it and maybe save that that way. And, uh, and I'm just going to highlight these ones here because I know I got the nice green happening here but because I kind of went dark in these other ones I just want to make sure I have a little bit of hints of this dark look in these areas here as well and again it's giving it a nice pop and I kind of like that so adding my stem for this guy here I'm just going to extend this out on this end and just kind of make it seem like one of those wild flower type leaves that are happening at the top. Perfect. I like how that is looking. Okay, so we've got three. Um, I like to have odd numbers so we can either I feel like it could use one over here so we'll just do one or two here I think one and like a faded looking one as well and again I'm gonna have this one go downward just roughly creating painting in the strokes And where's the violet? Here we go. Adding some of the violet in there. Oh, no, that's indigo. Did I get some of the indigo? It's fine. Those are the three colors I use for these anyways, and I think it's a great combination. Adding some to the edge now. And then I think I'll do one more because one, two, three, four, five. Okay. 
but this one I'm gonna keep it like very loose like that and then add some of the blue in there so it's like that nice shock of blue blending in with the violet and now going back to my green I'll add the stem coming out from this way, kind of twirling, and then giving it a couple of these viney looking leaves. And then let's do the other one protruding this way. And again, I'm giving it some of those leaves. And I really like these buds, so I think I want to do a bud happening. Let's do this bud over on this end, like this. You guys can see it, right? Yes, you can. Perfect, and that's it. I think this is good. We are going to do one more thing, and I think that is going to be um, adding some of the green in between here, just to kind of give some breakup to the florals that we have. Otherwise, it just looks like one mishmash because it's so loose. Um, and so I have this semi-dark green that we've been using. You can mix some of the ochre if you want in it. Let's just see how that works out. But we might just need a nice stark contrasty color for this green here so I'm gonna have a couple of I'm gonna have a leaf happening right here just like that and see again like how it immediately breaks up the whole tri floral thing that's happening here uh, and then I'm gonna have another one over on this end but kind of just in the shape of how this petal is taking the shape of that petal so it kind of gives it some light shadow shadow is what I'm looking for and now with the leftover green I think I just want to add a couple of like little hints of green around these little florals just to kind of make them pop some more too. Continue with the popping. So adding some green here. And then I'm gonna add some over here as well. And this one could be darker green here actually. So I'm just gonna get some of that darker green. Why not like have it like a leaf protruding out or why not and give this guy a second little one happening there and then I'm just adding one at the top here perfect so you you get the idea of giving it some sort of shadows in between to kind of make these florals pop because too much white space white space is a good thing but it's also nice to kind of have a lot of greens and you can just go in later after we have ended and just add some lighter greens like in between these areas here and that makes your florals pop also gives them some sort of division so you can see where one starts where the other ends um and it's just all around good to take your whole painting to, to the next level. 
So um, this is it. Uh, stay tuned for the time lapse because once I have said bye to you guys, I will be enhancing this a little bit more just to see what else I can do. But for now, I think I'll just read your comments to see if anyone has any questions. Plus, there was this whole talk about seeing my face and not seeing my face. So I want to see what was happening there. Um, otherwise, we're at 2.55 and we're doing pretty good. Um, so I'm just going to scroll up and see. Oh, Kathy's, Kathy's been sick over two weeks. Sorry, Kathy. That sounds terrible. Bachelor buttons. That sounds cute. Okay, Christine, how many more white knight colors are you going to get? That's a lot. No. But send me a picture I want to see because I'll be fangirling over it as well. Um, hi, Jennifer. Yeah, Cindy's on the mend. I know she's doing some interesting things. W water therapy, right, Cindy? Thanks, Patty. Hi, Patty. Hi, Wendy. Um, thanks, Gail. I'm glad you like it. Can't wait to see your work, guys. So make sure when you post it on Instagram or on Facebook that you tag me. And if you're not following me on Instagram, my handle is hello, Clarice G. Deanna, late. Listen, girlfriend, you're never too late. You can always catch the replay as well, so don't worry. Okay, here we go. Lottie da I think you would have more room for us to see everything in the frame if you would remove the live of yourself. No need for us to see you when you're painting or the tag and follow sign. Uh, fair enough. We love to watch her live. It is so real. Uh, thanks, Cindy. Okay, thank you, Wendy. Thanks, Lottie. Honestly, guys, I really appreciate your honest feedback. This is, this is good stuff. Um, beautiful, and I love the pops of blue. Thanks, Kathy. Um, okay, greens are lovely and soft. I think everyone really liked this, and I kind of like how this turned out too, and I think it really, the blues really tie in with the light, soft, big hues big blooms that we have happening here um okay awesome i think everyone is doing pretty pretty good and having a great conversation on here and so i will not prolong this much more um anyone joining joining late please feel free to catch the replay this is going to be on youtube and then like i mentioned previously just tag me so or send me your work i would love to see it in direct message um okay awesome i think that's it thanks guys so much for watching and i will bid you adieu and have a lovely lovely sunday and um i will see you for next week's video tutorial which is going to be another wildflower. And again, next Sunday we will tune in and do um, something with that, with, with the new wildflower that we learned. So I hope you guys are excited. All right, guys, have a wonderful day and we'll chat soon. Bye.